What is up, you guys? Welcome back to Twink Revolution. I'm Sam. And I'm Gian. How are you doing, Gian? Oh, wonderful. Um, I'm pretty excited for this episode. Yeah? It's, uh, it feels topical. It's much needed. Yeah, um, I'm here in 2004, <laughs> and um, <laughs> we're doing a freedom of speech episode. Yeah. It feels, feels like in the year of our Lord, 2020. Um, I know, I've just given a giant mental sigh to the idea that one even has to do this. You have a special guest, Miley Annapolis. I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> yeah. It's Ben Shapiro, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we're, doing, we're doing two hours on uh, why intergener- intergenerational relationships are actually good. We're doing a question time. We have everyone who's been canceled the last decade. Um, everyone's been murdered. <laughs> but no, um, um, I've noticed the last few days... Lots of baby self-identified leftists and liberals basically having complete meltdowns over this girl from Kent State named Caitlin Bennett. Gun um, girl. Gun girl. Gun girl poop pants. Poop, poopy, poopy pants gun girl. Do you want to explain why they call her poop pants? Um, you might know better than I. I, but, I think you do. Oh, uh, well, I mean, um, allegedly yeah. uh, in the game universe, she... Uh, she just like shit herself at a frat party, <laughs> and there's there's sort of Snapchat footage to to corroborate this. Yeah, um, where yeah she's she's face down face down with uh, poop in her pants. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, she's... and then and now she goes around campuses trying to own the le- libs with uh, got you got you questions right like yeah. So she's doing that before the scandal. Um, what made her famous was um, during her graduation she went on campus. Of like a rifle, like open carrying, which apparently was legal. Very phallic. Uh, very, very phallic. Freudian. Yeah. And blew up. Everyone hates her because of that, which I'm like, there's plenty of reasons. Not to literally her. blew up, I assume. No. I assume. Oh, okay. <laughs> she blew up like on social media and now she's become kind of like a meme on like TikTok and Twitter and like well she she um she had a, a YouTube moment recently that I encountered I, I've sort of seen her a few times she goes around doing this kind of like um you know stick a microphone in the face of some gormless undergraduate on a on a college campus with blue hair and is like so you call yourself a socialist and they're like uh uh y- y- yeah and she's like oh well um have you ever been to Venezuela <laughs> um, and and. The person sort of stammers out a response, and her entire mo is to get them to to be triggered. Yeah, like, and then and then when they when they are triggered, she has accomplished her aim. And wh- which network is it? Breitbart or something? She's so doing she this for? created Liberty Hangout a couple of years ago while she was in college, which is kind of like a libertarian conservative. Oh, I mean, it's surely um, just full reactionary these very days. Very reactionary. Right? Yeah. Um, and she basically got a job at Infowars. Oh, sorry, Infowars. So she's I an Infowars remember which, supporter. Yeah, no, she. So yeah, so it's it's great. It's a good bit. I mean, it's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, like I, I maybe I find it funny for the wrong reasons. <laughs> um, because the kind of stammering, whining response she gets is so ineffectual. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's um. It's very unfortunate, right? Because these these people are not difficult to um, to just make kind of break down completely. You just have to not grant every premise of the the culture war they think they're in. Totally. Um, like, what sh- are you like, Sam? Uh, so, um, you want to ban all guns? No, I don't uh, want to uh, ban. Uh, 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 <laughs> but you but you don't like guns. No, I do like guns. Oh, uh, 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 <laughs> malfunction. Um, yeah, it's like if if you if you're not like um, so, Sam, uh, you support um, all late term abortions up to the forty seventh trimester. No. <laughs> wow. Uh, so you're conservative. Totally. Yeah. Um, I'm conservative on my drug usage and rampant sex addiction. Um, really really plays into that oh so you think uh sex is good it can be wow uh as long as they're hot (laughs) (laughs) um yeah no i mean these people these people and like there's there's a bunch of them right um you you've uh i know you're a big fan of the uh the dasha clip yeah where the other info wars k 
candidate or recruit. Well, the just, story is just great. Fucks out, right? So this girl who's I believe went to Berkeley got like a week trial at Infowars to basically do interviews, and she ends up going to Dasha Nekrasova from before Red Scare launched, and basically goes up and just completely destroys herself, like. Dasha un- she trips over her own dick. It's unforced error territory. Yes. Um, look it up. It's funny. I'm not going to describe the whole we'll thing. Link, we'll link it in the bio. But uh, but they literally posted it and thought they did good <laughs> and then realized they looked really fucking stupid. And they deleted the video and the girl ended up not getting getting her promised um, interview job canceled. Oh, poor And she did thing. a whole video where she wow, like... so much for the tolerant left. Like, <laughs> she literally cried workers. like on her video. I watched it except, like years back and... <laughs> Because just too good. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, but it's interesting to sort of think about um, in the context of free speech, this kind of like, I'm going to go around and trigger the libs and make them sort of like have a screaming histrionic fit yeah. on camera is sort of what um, what free speech is considered to be. Mm-hmm. But I think this, this episode, we kind of wanted to cover a bunch of um, just sort of interesting instances right off like, it turns out, um, and and here's here's me giving up the uh, the conclusion a little early, but yeah. like, it, it turns out that the left has a much greater interest in in free speech um, yeah. than the right does. The right only uses it as a sort of parlor game to to trigger liberals. They don't actually believe in it. No, they don't give a fuck. Like they'd it's... rather have blasphemy laws and shit like that. They, but they're just they they they're using the fact that the left has used free speech to go around and trigger libs by saying mean things. Yeah. And I mean, free speech is much more historically rooted within leftist and working class causes. And now you have any self-identified leftists on campus, like being like, well, she's the reason we need to ban free speech because I'm, she's promoting white supremacy and all these other things. And have, they have no real realization that getting rid of free speech is basically like giving all the guns to go shoot you in the head on the left. Like it's literally yes. the end. It'll end it all. Yeah. It's, no, let, let us please cede all authority to police speech to the state or to corporations. Yeah. Um, and, and let's have them tell us what speech is good and bad. Mm-hmm. And then we'll just sit back and w- wait for our glorious utopia to arrive. That'll yeah. work out fine <laughs> for the left, right? The left, left speech is never criminalized. Yeah. I mean, these, People can't debate. It's why they have to end up calling for prohibition or canceling of people at anywhere possible because they've been so kept in a bubble that they've no longer had the ability to actually comprehend ideas that counter actors and actually argue against them. It's why the Caitlin Bennett thing is so interesting because, like today, um, she was at Ohio University and it basically it became like a giant like mini riot-esque thing nowhere near compared people to, just heckling her in the most kind of like pathetic way yeah like, I'm very just following mad. her around like a giant mob following her around shouting you're a white supremacist but like throwing like hot coffee and like oh like, i didn't see that i, I didn't watch it was literally that. just like um oh, that's that's lame videos like the police couldn't like protect they're like we can't do anything to you well i i thought um, um there, i did see a short clip which was people saying like hey caitlin have you pooped your pants again yeah that hilarious see that's a good exercise of free speech mock the shit out of your enemies yes um if you regard this person as your enemy then then yeah. like yeah just just asking her like why she hasn't diped up is hilarious yeah um but going around and giving a huge amount of power to her ideas by being like, she is the most dangerous force in the universe. It's like, you no, just like she is, she's incredibly intellectually feeble. Yeah. Her ideas are not impressive. She's an not scary. As reporter guy. Is yeah. Like... She's a moron. Like, she, <laughs> she's very dumb. And yeah. if you watch her debate, like there was a, there was a clip of her um, talking to some guy who's, I guess a sort of like, I don't know, hipster campus libertarian about, um, trans bathroom usage oh yeah like tampons in a male bathroom or something like that and the guy literally responds over and over again i don't care i don't care i don't care and she comes off looking incredibly stupid yeah um just for she's all like but you believe they should have tampons in men's bathroom he's like i I don't care and she's like well but do you think you think that's a healthy and she's like this is not my business 
I don't, I don't care. Yeah. So here's a, here's a pro tip. I think we can <laughs> offer you before we jump into some some interesting recent examples. Here's our pro tip for you, if you get a an Infowars gotcha journalist shove a microphone in your face, like either just like being a sincere leftist with any kind of material analysis is useful, mm-hmm. or just just say oh, I I don't I don't know I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> just be chill be chill as fuck, and they have nothing because all their their entire point is just to get you to be irrational like, yeah irrational and, and mad and start and start and start repeating like liberal culture war signifiers yeah so that they can like own the libs so don't be a fucking lib and you will never be defeated by these people mm-hmm. um yeah um <laughs> sam your 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 vegan crew are getting weird and it's very strange that you've you've turned up with uh, your shirt off as well what is are you protesting or something why are you not wearing a shirt? I'm here to pour um, bloody milk all over my body. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> For that Bernie Sanders. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what What the hell happened here? <laughs> um, so Bernie had his rally a couple days ago in Nevada and a bunch of direct action everywhere, which are like Bay Area, original, like vegan animal lib activists, went on stage and took over the microphone and poured... And three girls took their shirts off and poured bloody milk over Hawuga. themselves. Hubba, yeah. hubba, hubba. The pictures were hilarious. Um, if you look up the pictures of like the topless girls, like and Bernie just in like, and his reaction was like, well, in Nevada, this kind of stuff happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a boss. Um, but it was directed at um, the farm bill and how he helped support subsidies towards dairy farmers you know as a person from vermont there's no dairy farms there so Mm. he's just doing it because he loves supporting um (laughs) farms and big business and you know instead of his local interest like (laughs) right i mean and and um you as a as a uh now topless uh milk blood covered (laughs) uh activist vegan um, yeah you you don't particularly condemn uh, Bernie's sort of support on on a like representing his constituency basis of the the farm bill. Is that what you're telling me? I don't think it matters. I mean, I think it's actually the timing of the occasion. They say they care about Bernie, which I don't disagree with. They probably do. You think they're sincerely supporters of Bernie Sanders? I think they are, and I think that's why they chose him as the person to go after. But I think they have such a lack of um, analysis of what's going on in a broader political um, world that they don't realize they're basically just giving ammo to nut jobs within the broader, like centrist, like right wing power dynamics. So th- yeah, this is kind of the the um, another example of people trying to push Bernie, quote unquote, to the left. And I, I, I use that in the most disparaging sense possible, right? It's not mm-hmm. to the left. It's to push Bernie to a to a a, a more fringe position yeah. on um on a specific issue. Uh but they're trying to do it too early. Yeah. The thing is the, the dude the like the dude will listen to you. That's the thing. And that's mm-hmm. why they're targeting him, right? He's kind of he's kind of um easy pickings in this regard. If you go protest Trump in this way, it won't work. He's gonna say, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> Right, but but Bernie's actually like sincerely probably interested in hearing from these kinds of radical voices with a critique of of animal agriculture or whatever. Um, but they're trying to do it during the primary. Yeah, well, it's like the in no, twenty sixteen. Too, too it's like how Black Lives Matter did it, and it if anything hurt their cause more than it helped from people that normally would have sided with them. Right. I mean, DXC already has a problematic history. And they were actually doing really well of doing the right things to build support where they were focusing on like actual like CAFOs and factory farms and like, you know, rescuing like sick animals from farms, which actually was rising support. And now they choose to like disrupt Bernie Sanders, like of all people. Yeah, but during a few days before the Nevada caucus, which yet again, right? Like if if he's, if he's one Nevada, if it's in the bag, Mm -hmm. then, um, cool. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you try and push him, right? Or, or if he, if he has the nomination, you can try and push him. You can try and make your support contingent. Um, Elizabeth Warren doesn't give a fuck what you're saying. She, she will read the names of every cow ever, (laughs) ever killed, but she's not going to do shit all for you. No. Um, 
Pete Buttigieg murders at least 17 cows every night out of frustration. Um, and, and like, yeah, I, I just think this is, it's a shitty tactic. And it's the same thing that like the open borders people have done with Bernie, where they're trying to push him into a, a completely absurd open borders position right now. Yeah. Not like, um, Hey, if he is in fact the president of the United States, yeah, go go lobby him. Go lobby him to support your particular fringe position. Yeah. And hey, maybe you'll get somewhere. But like, he's in a political contest for actual power right now. He's contesting power. He does not hold that power yet. Mm-hmm. And so like, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just like, it comes off as political narcissism. Totally. And it's extremely elitist in many aspects because people, um, I think, took it as, oh, these people are putting animals above like workers because like they're possibly jeopardizing this campaign, which would help workers and more overall. And like, he has a pretty good stance on like CAFOs and like factory farming and stuff too. Like he's not a vegan, but like no president like who has a legitimate chance. is going to be like, <laughs> let's ban meat in my four years as president. Like that's not a thing. Yeah, it's um, not exactly a winning tactic. No, it's, it comes off as narcissism, like you said. And I think they probably lost much more support than they probably had prior. Right. I, I would just, I would not be surprised to learn, right. If you, if you were sort of a pressure group and you went and tried to schedule mm-hmm. a meeting with the Bernie campaign, that, yeah. that you probably could get some time. Totally. Um, and that's not to say that there's not a time and a place for dramatic flourishes of, narcissism or performative protest but like it just what what are you hoping to accomplish yeah at worst right you embarrass him into a position that is untenable with the electorate uh in which case you've won a sort of a a sort of pyrrhic moral victory right you're Mm -hmm. like well i great we got bernie sanders to say um compulsory poppers for all or something (laughs) you're like cool and then he loses yeah then yeah like uh, let me be clear. Everyone must be gay now. Uh, it's, it, it's illegal to not be gay. Uh, it's like, cool. Yeah, great. You've you've done that. And now you have taken no power. You're not doing politics. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're doing aesthetics. You've you've expressed your aesthetics successfully on a, on a large stage and accomplished exactly nothing. This is the difference between like doing politics as the exercise of power versus... I don't know, doing performance art, the fucking um, Extinction Rebellion people, right? Like, literally doing performance art instead of politics. Yeah. Uh, well, good on them. Good, good DXE. Big shout out. We love, we love our vegan comrades, but holy shit, just like w- wait, hold your horses in in a in a vegan vegan and uh, you know consensual way. Just choose a better way. Like they could have went to the rally and like just handed out like vegan pamphlets, and it probably would be more effective than what they did during their like demonstration like it would have been more effective yeah well uh, so um clearly we've uh we've stifled their free speech here yeah made me want to not be vegan anymore great but i'm gonna go eat a a steak (laughs) (laughs) i was gonna eat like some like dog feet and like (laughs) monkey brains hot yeah sounds pretty tasty um want to make our podcast illegal in georgia is it not already uh well let's try it (laughs) um I think BDS, uh, boycott, divestment, and sanctions against Israeli occupation is good. Me too. Whoops. Oh, well, now now it's illegal in, in the state of Georgia. Yeah, Fuck. we can never go um, speak there, get a public sector job. Congratulations. Oh, that was just, my plan. But it's also um, 27 other states. Really? Yes. Well, fuck. Okay, and, this is actually good. Maybe we should edit that back out. <laughs> we'll beep that. Um, and then um, Trump also passed an anti-Semitism thing for like universities and stuff, but it includes the criticism of the state of Israel. So BDS is also in violation of that. Um, but Abby Martin, who is the, we've talked about before, the creator of Gaza fights for freedom and behind empire files is suing the state of Georgia because she was supposed to speak at some media literacy conference there. And they wanted to make her sign or she had a sign um a fan that says she will not do BDS and she's like, Well I can't. It's 
So she withdrew, and then all the other speakers withdrew along with Ferris comrades, and the whole event was canceled. Solidarity and, forever. Yeah. And now she's doing um, suing this um, state with the Council of American Islamic Relations. Yep. So CARM, um, to over to that law, and I think their goal is to get it to the Supreme Court um, and overturn this First Amendment violation. So, I mean, to the extent that, um, you know, we are we are having a free speech episode. Yeah. Um, the issue raised here, right, is is sort of a good example of um, the sensitivity and correctly, right, that people have around anti-Semitism mm -hmm. has in this case been weaponized by the, the reactionary right wing to criminalize the speech or, or, or to to prevent the speech of a left wing, a very committed left wing yeah. media figure, um, who who you know has a has a very sincere and well reasoned critique of specific Israeli military interventions, um, and she is prevented from speaking now. Yeah, and we see this in other countries where this kind of prevention of hurting feelings or saying something politically discorrect, like in Europe. Um, a lot of the laws targeted towards like anti-Semitism are so broad or generalized that they've actually been restricting like pro-Palestinian demonstrations and like activism in countries like Britain and Germany and France. Um, and now it's starting to happen in the U.S. Yep. And it's actually one of the few issues that happens on campuses all the time where groups get restricted by free speech codes and it's the one area that gets a lot of attention that the right wing free speech advocates on the libertarian right wing side will never talk about because they're yeah. all heavily connected to like deep Zionism. And like, <laughs> well, they're, they're, I mean, yeah. And that's, and that's the thing is um, leaving the, the issue of free speech in the hands of completely cynical actors who don't like their speech is not unpopular. That's the thing. They like, to go out and say, like, corporations are people and the state of Israel should be able to occupy the entire Middle East <laughs> turns out to be a fine political position. Their speech is not endangered. Yeah. Um, because there are plenty of corporations that are that are friendly to that particular position, for example. Um, there's a huge media establishment, a corporate media establishment that, that will publish that position and there will be no legal challenge to this. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is that the, the dissenting position is usually the left wing one. Yeah. Um, in the U.S. particularly, we're on the back foot. And and this is the thing, is when people start getting really sensitive about an issue like um, some just shitty, you know, trans-exclusionary shithead who wants to say some terrible things about trans people, mm -hmm. which, you know, are, are yeah, are genuinely hurt hurt uh, the, the, the feelings of um, trans people and, and are terrible things to say. Um, so if you, if you basically want to start using the institutions of, of censorship, right. To, to shut that down. Yeah. Um, they will be turned around on you immediately. Like, like They've within a day. Been, like, yeah, I think the narrative behind the free speech wars has been deeply co-opted by right wing causes. But when you look into the history of the U S and free speech, I mean, the speech codes that remain on most campuses originate from the Vietnam War protest aftermath on college campuses. Um, and also just the mass persecution of like the Red Scare, which d during that time, the Supreme Court did not view free speech as covering them because they were inciting violence and discontent. Well, yeah, this this is the, uh, the, the, the main kind of trope that people use to talk about... Um, the fact that free speech has limits yeah. is the uh, the idea of um, to falsely yell fire in a crowded theater. Sometimes, you know, variously mm -hmm. quoted as something like yelling fire in a crowded theater is an example of speech that is outside the, the limits of, of acceptable free speech or expression. Um, that was from the decision written by Oliver Wendell Holmes. And it was a, a unanimous Supreme Court decision in 19, I, I think it was 1918, um, maybe 1919. I can't remember when the actual case got to Supreme Court. But uh, based on um, uh, a, a Jewish uh, socialist mm -hmm. uh, named Schenk, I believe, um, something like that, uh, 
who was handing out pamphlets to to draft age men saying resist the draft um it was an anti-war socialist you know, that that is that is equivalent to yelling fire <laughs> in a crowded theater um and so anytime you start saying well there's limits to free speech uh you you just have to remember like the entire history of of free speech in america is anytime you abridge it uh, for in for for the sake of decorum or politeness, yeah, or or feelings or niceness, then what you get straight back is uh is censorship of left wing ideas. Basically. Well, it's straight like away. um, so many leftists and libs get upset when groups like ACLU defend the free speech rights of groups like. I don't know, the Ku Klux Klan or yeah, like the American Nazis, Nazi yeah. party. Yeah. And they're like, why are they supporting these right wingers? And they don't realize the reason they do that is because once the law accepts that, it's going to be pinned on the, the workers unionizing and striking, or it's going to be worked on the anti-war activist or the anti-Zionist um, activist or anything like that. Yeah. Um, you have to protect all free speech via government because it'll, easily see up to the groups that are most marginalized and like disempowered right you you yeah you i mean the whole idea was a lot of like particularly jewish lawyers defending nazis yeah um was was the perfect demonstration of the idea of like no this is not about the content of the speech mm -hmm. we don't care it's the fact that it is speech and it is unpopular speech and it's a dissenting opinion which we think is reprehensible but we are willing to uphold the the higher principle yeah um and that that's that's all incredibly nice, but you have to think about like the you know during the the Bush era and the Iraq War, there's this massive erosion of free speech yet again, where like even the right to protest in public was completely abridged. Where there's sort of this idea that like you have to be in a free speech zone. <laughs> I think it's like it can be no more than one mile away from the thing you're protesting. Yeah. Um, so you can't even go protest, right? I mean, freely. And most of them are unconstitutional. Um, the group Foundation for the Individual Rights and Expression, FIRE, which is like a huge like freedom of speech and expression thing targeted towards college campuses, um, basically gets cases all the time just showing like, oh, these rules are in violation of the First Amendment and they just haven't been challenged. And that's why... But people welcome it. And that's, that's, I think, the problem is that people think they're winning some kind of victory where they're, I mean, I, I just call them liberals because I think they're libs. Mm -hmm. But let's, let's, you know, assume good intentions and say they are, they are some, some kind of part of the left milieu. Self-identified leftists. Self-identified leftists. <laughs> Alleged leftists. Yeah. Um, they, they think they've really won, yeah. right? When they manage to invoke uh, corporate censorship to to get a, a bad person banned from mm -hmm. Twitter or something, or they think they've they've won when they manage to enforce like a shitty campus speech code, and you're like you you've won nothing you've you've actually lost because the the the, the right wing and the forces of reaction are so much fucking better at using this stuff than you are. Well, they have power. Yes, they <laughs> they hold they hold actual power, and they do they're you know they don't care about the principle. There is no principle being upheld here. It's simply it's a it's a fight. It's a it's a contest of, of power, and they're winning. Yeah. So, I don't know all, all the kind of the people who are like anti far super soldiers who think they're being terribly bold by drumming you know just, you know un, unpopular or uncouth or mean ideas out of out of the discourse and they they celebrate this. I I just I think they're so misguided. Like the Berkeley riots when Milo went there, or Ben Shapiro. I went to the Ben Shapiro one actually. I didn't go to a show. I went to the thing was when, when I moved to the Bay Area, and I wanted to see like, oh, what does this shit look like? And literally, there was snipers everywhere and police everywhere of like guns. Yeah, bring out the militarized they spent, police. They spent six hundred thousand dollars of university money to allow this event to go on because of these Antifa super soldiers when they have. And they were they were upset about that. They spent money on protection, but like you're the reason they're doing this. Like if you care so much about these ideas being spread, bring your own fucking speakers. Bring someone else to debate these stand, ideas. Stand outside. Stand outside and fucking yell. Like that's fine. Like you can just you can stand outside and yell. Yeah. But the the idea being though that like Ben Shapiro is a is a complete paper tiger. 
Yeah. His his ideas are incredibly feeble, mm-hmm. but so much of how he has a, a giant audience and a following is that nobody will actually stand up and debate him except screeching liberals <laughs> who just, just want to like go into histrionics about uh, how dangerous he is. And he's not dangerous. No. He's a complete Muppet. <laughs> like People were calling him a Nazi. He's a Jew. Like... Yeah, but he's he's got internalized anti Semitism. No, yeah. that's, that's the thing. He's he's just a moron. Okay. And his his ideas are no more or less moronic than any ideas that we have we have had to contend with on the left in the last hundred years. Yeah, it's like in fact considerably less moronic than many. It's like when um like get someone like Angela Nagel, I know they hate her, but like she debated um Sargana Fakad in like some British mopped the floor with she him. She mopped him because she doesn't play into a liberal framework. She's coming from a working class socialist background and he just couldn't debate her. She's like, oh, well, she's much more intelligent than any she's one of these like, more dipshits. Inte- yeah, more intelligent, doesn't buy his framing yeah. and, and is able to articulate a, like a positive vision of, of a left wing. And, and so the, the problem is if, if the only people you're going to leave to debate these people are, are like just the, the shittiest sort of like centrists who kind of are both sides in it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> like you're just, you're, you're giving them so much ground and I, I don't get it. Yeah. Um, Caitlin Bennett still won't debate us for the record. Coward. Br- bring it on girl. Bring it on. We won't poop our pants. You're <laughs> welcome to poop yours. We defend you. We had to defend your right to poop your pants. Yeah. Freedom of expression. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so a lot of this, um, debate has been has been raging mm-hmm. particularly in the onlines yeah um for a long time and and the the one of the first sort of encounters um was post 9 11 online atheism discourse yes uh and it appears this is this is flared up again mm-hmm. uh in in france france you know the bastion of free speech which no one actually will believe in. <laughs> um and for good reason um they Basically, had a recent case with some teenage French lesbian went on Instagram and did a video. And I only say allegedly because we don't know. We haven't seen, like, the records to prove that it's happened. But some Muslim preacher or cleric or something like that basically called her, like, a degenerate, like... A, a, a whore and a something. Yeah, a degenerate something. whore or something like that. And basically, as a result, she did a video basically shitting on Islam. And Whoops. she basically got death threats and her address got doxxed and released. And she had to end up changing schools, which, I mean, how impressive is that? that the French government was like, oh, well, let's get you to another school. <laughs> <laughs> There's no zip code restrictions. We're just going to send you there. Um, but pre- President... Emmanuel Macron and um, right wing party Marine Le Pen mm. have called out this and said blasphemy is not is not like, a crime. It's not a crime. And um, well, th- so so the the problem is that like it's one of these situations where everyone can end up looking like shithead. Yeah. Um, you know, whatever. She's a child, and and so whatever. I, I don't, I, you know, I don't, I don't believe in uh, death threats for children. No. Uh, the problem is that the, yet again, the, the, the right wing are very quick to pick up this particular, f- you know, quote unquote free speech case mm-hmm. um, and, and weaponize it into, you know, whatever their, their gross anti-Islamic, you know, narrative. Um, the problem is that there's plenty of people who will, who will play into this. Abdallah Zakri, general delegate for the French council for the Muslim faith told French radio, the girl knows exactly what she has done. They who sow reap. Um, Zakri added that the teenager's comments were not covered by freedom of expression, but were insulting and provocative. Uh, delightful, right? Um, then, then, thankfully, just, yeah. just, just sorry for the for the sake of, I will go on and say. Afterwards, Mohammed Massau, uh, the new head of the CFCM, said criticism of Islam had to be accepted, and no remarks justified death threats. We have to accept all debates and refuse all violence, he wrote. Um, see, there, there are two, two separate positions being articulated there, one of which is um, the, you know, the, the, the small L liberal idea of like, yep, we all got to figure a way to kind of coexist and 
I'm going to think you're a complete shithead for saying what you said. Yeah. But I'm not going to publish your address and, and threaten to kill you. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the, the other person did the, the oh so sinister well she knew what she did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it kind of brings up a similar climate to a much lesser extent in like how prolific it was, but the Charlie Hebdo massacre in France, which is like one of the most iconic, like modern free speech or alleged free speech debates. Um, I mean, there's a lot of hypocrisy around well, they, they that know, as well. They know what they did. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it was basically similar things of like, oh, allegedly it was the jokes that resulted in the massacre of people in the Charlie Hebdo satirical thing. Yeah. But, and then they utilized the free speech narrative afterwards, which when it, when people looked into it, they're hypocrites because they actually fired someone for anti-Semitism. So it's like this idea of like, oh, we believe in criticizing everyone, but not when you're disgrouped. And it kind of... Yeah. I, so I, yeah. I, I never bought that one because, the, 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 I mean, yeah, the point being like, you simply don't have to agree with these people. The point being, no, but I mean, like, it, them cl- yeah, you know, behind they, they free claim, speech. Yeah, is, but that's not, that's not hiding behind free speech. They genuinely were exercising free speech for for reasons that could be entirely shitty. Like, it, it, we don't we don't actually have to inspect their motives. And I think I think this is to the extent mm-hmm. that the incredibly sinister part of this this particular story is the person acting acting as a delegate uh, for the French Council for the Muslim Faith. Yeah, saying this girl knows exactly what she has done. Mm-hmm. They who sow reap, and this was the. Um, if you think about like the the satanic verses uh, affair with uh, Sal- Salman Rushdie, right? British uh, uh, novelist wrote a wrote a book, and um, it was not well received uh, for for various reasons because it was claimed to be ba- blasphemous, um, and he was he was put under under a death sentence um, by by the Ayatollah Khomeini. Yeah, um, and and so the the problem is not like okay, whatever. This this is you know, this is the response you're going to get from a, a certain strain of, of fascist ideas in the world. This is these are the people who believe they should have dominion over all, and that the the threat for nonconformity is 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 death, or the punishment is, is death. Mm-hmm. Um, the the problem is when when sort of liberals, right, and I I mean kind of anybody who's a member of polite society starts going, well they they know what they did, they knew what they were you know they knew what they were in for, yeah, uh, in a very knowing way. I, th- I think it's incredibly sinister. Totally. Um, it reminds me of the, I forgot her last name, but it's like an ex-Muslim um, Iranian woman who lives in Britain. It's like a co-chair of the ex-Muslim council there. And she went to a campus, I think her name is Miriam or something like that. And she was talking about like the issues of it because she was a former, she's a apostate. She left Islam and basically um, the, some protesters from the Muslim group on campus basically stopped it and stopped the whole presentation. And then the queer group and the feminist group also defended it. But like this woman's an avowed socialist. She rejects the right wing narratives around Islam, but like she can't even have her opinion. And they wonder why people end up going to the right wing for support because they can't even get like their cause is like, right. And this, this <laughs> is sort of the, the age old story of people like, um, Ayan Hirsi Ali, yeah. right. Who, who was repudiated, you know, being, being an apostate, mm-hmm. um, was repudiated by, by the, the liberal left. Yeah. And so found a very cuddly and cozy home among the shittiest reactionary conservatives. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course that, that's the narrative you end up having, right. They, they end up speaking to the issues that most animate those those audiences and um it it's it's sad that we've we've just ceded we've ceded all ground yeah in this debate to reactionaries who who are quite cynical in their in their use of free speech yet again wouldn't prevent them from doing it but Mm -hmm. they i I don't i don't believe they're doing it out of any earnest belief in the power of ideas i think they're doing it entirely from the the cynical exercise of power yeah and i think that's where free speech is often utilized by groups like who have power to censor groups they don't like when they like France is a great example. France is actually um, doing a separate inquiry into whether the girl who had to change schools and like basically like kind of like hide herself 
um, whether or not she had provoked religious hatred, which is punishable by the law. Hot. Like, so you, according to French law, you can't um, basically be bigoted towards people because of who have views or my views. Like, you can't yeah. criticize. You can't um, criticize like, religion. I couldn't criticize yeah. Ben Shapiro for like his like Judaism, but I can criticize Judaism as a whole. Yeah. But like, then you really can't have a debate or conversation. It kind of well, it's easy to cry to cry before you're hit, right? In the sense that you can you can simply say. Wow, you're attacking me for my for my religion. Totally. Um, and and you're like, I think we should lock up all the gays in concentration camps. And you can turn around and you go, Yeah. Well, but it's just my this is my religious views, and you're actually you're actually a bigot, and you're violating hate speech laws by telling me that I can't say. You know, I I don't know. It's yeah. it's just such a ridiculous position. And the in some sense, right? The on, the only um, neutral position in this, if you know, to to both sides, it. <laughs> Um, is is to say, like, yeah, we we can just we can find reprehensible speech reprehensible, mm -hmm. but to start crying foul and trying to appeal to some neutral referee, you're going to be sorely disappointed because the the referee is is that of a, a state that is fundamentally run by the bourgeois and the, the capitalists. Yeah, I mean that's the issue with like France, where there is no First Amendment or free speech, is that they can just kind of censor tons of things and it kind of leads to shit like this where like everyone's kind of like getting affected and you really can't figure out who's in the right because there's no yeah everyone's an asshole and everyone's that's, an and asshole that's, fine. that's that's um, your freedom um but not in france well I, and in the u.s i feel like people lean a little too heavily on the first amendment but it, um, but things that are prosecuted there aren't prosecuted here. Oh, absolutely. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not saying the free, it's first amendment's a bad. The first amendment's thing. not perfect at all. It's, well, I, I no, I think I think you know it's it's a it's a good principle. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is that that as applied, it's never been applied consistently. Totally. And people make the mistake of thinking that the existence of the first amendment is the reason we think free speech is there's, there's a moral case. For, for free speech to be defended or unpopular mm -hmm. speech to be allowed to exist yeah. and not restrained. It's the other way around. No, I, mean, I agree. Yeah. Um, and and it's, it's merely that people will sort of will invoke the First Amendment in weird spots, like mm -hmm. in Twitter. <laughs> you know, like, banning on Twitter? It's the, violating the First Amendment. It's like, nope, doesn't cover it. <laughs> um, the First Amendment is, is, you know, was a was a, um, a reflection of a specific moment in time when religious persecution by other religious people mm -hmm. was a really big problem <laughs> and and you know uh sort of the state trying to restrain the freedom of the press was a very big problem yeah. so it was, it's, it's you know it was written as a specific reaction however the moral case for unpopular ideas to be defended exists separately from that no i agree and the the political case the actual political tactical case for the left mm -hmm. to say that that we should we should maintain a monopoly on free speech um is is uh I, I think even more compelling these days to to attack billionaires so you can if you can climb you know billionaires can basically cry now that they're being persecuted <laughs> like tartines bakery um they they're trying to unionize at a local bakery in it's a chain um, bakery. it's like two places um, whatever that's a chain. in the bay area and they're trying to unionize and the CEO accused their um, organizing as the equivalent of um, Nazism. Yeah, it's fascist. <laughs> See those poor persecuted billionaires and all this rhetoric about like taxing billionaires more. That's actually violence against them. Yeah, and and if the standard you're applying right is like it sounds mean. Yeah, it sounds mean to a minority. Well, billionaires are a minority, a very small minority, and we're incredibly mean to them. Uh, and we we should we should never give up the right to do that. But the problem is, if you start applying the standard of like hurting hurting someone's feelings or saying something very unkind and very cruel to someone is actually illegal, yeah. Then um, you've you've given up way too much in terms of your ability to attack power. Power yeah. is held by the few, denied to the many, and and so you're always going to be in a position where there's an asymmetry. Give everyone the right to call you a stupid faggot because you can call them a stupid faggot back. It's it's that's how it works. <laughs> Yeah, I, so yeah, I don't, I, you know, I don't personally buy the buy the idea that there's sort of a certain bright line you can draw around free speech and say we will trust somebody else to decide what's what's good and what's bad because 
the people who decide, this neutral referee, always ends up siding with the, the those with the most power in society. Yeah. Um, you know, the the most reactionary elements or the you know, the the, the bourgeoisie or or whoever actually is holding power in society. So you're you're just ceding all your authority to people who fucking hate you and do not want what you to say what you want to say. Yeah. It also completely silences all dissent of agreement. Um, even in places where um, they had socialist revolutions and it turns out really bad and a lot of people die. So um, free speech, not to shig it on. <laughs> yeah, no, we should, um, we, should, we should take it back. It's ours. I mean, we, we fucking started it. Yeah, <laughs> but I guess kind of touching on that like idea of completely destroying dissent or like disagreement, which is so pivotal to like, you know, progress and ideological growth and just all the things that kind of matter when it comes to like improving the world. Um, university, university professors are also heavily impacted by kind of like the anti free speech, freedom of intellect. Like, Oh yeah. This is, this is one you, uh, you, you spotted, which is a, um, it's a UT Austin professor Mm -hmm. of classics who was written in, in a sort of, uh, about, uh, pederasty, the practice of, you know, young, nubile young students uh in sexual relationships with with their older men men basically older yeah. teachers or, or tutors or whatever and um dude's been canceled canceled yeah. hard um so basically at the university of texas in austin during the kind of like me to um campus brigade there was a lot of um, calls for basically exposing sexual harassment um, among faculty, which is totally valid. I mean, um, but it's kind of moved beyond them. And now they're targeting this man for not actions. He's done his, in 30 years of being a teacher, he's done, there's not a single incident report of him having sexually harassed or done anything problematic. And he's literally had people go to his house at night wearing masks, like saying, come out, you... Throw, throwing bricks through his window yeah. saying, child rapist. Yeah, come out, you pedo scum, because he is a classic professor and his focus is on the, like, Greco-Roman pedestry um, and has mentioned in some of his older research um, discussions around age of consent and making it more similar to Europe. And that makes him a pedophile, apparently. <laughs> yeah, and like the thing is, you can you can be um, you can be repulsed by his ideas. Totally. You like you 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 are you are fully entitled to think his ideas are fucking gross. But honestly, trying to get the dude fired for having a sort of sincerely held position, which is yeah, fringe, a little weird, a yeah. little bit little bit of a strange position. You are you are within your rights to ask like why why are you talking about this specific issue right now? Mm -hmm. um, but to kind of regard these ideas as so dangerous that they cannot be refuted is actually to give them a shitload of power. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I don't know. I, I, I think, you know, American moral sexual panic, particularly around gay sexuality is, uh, is definitely a fraught issue, but yeah, throwing bricks through the dude's windows and then, and then running and crying foul to the administration and, and demanding, he he be silenced and fired is um well you know it turns out uh those who were advocating saying that s consensual homosexual relationships were um normal and healthy mm -hmm. encountered a lot of the same behavior yeah and i think the sad thing is because whether or not you agree with his stance that's doesn't really matter it's more like he should have the ability to research things like that i mean it's around history it's about culture and just uh, like the controversial views are the ones that create discussions. If everyone agrees, there's no growth. Um, yeah, tell but, him he's wrong. But tell no him. one's sticking up for his academic freedom except for like, I think two professors, like one that's like a queer studies in somewhere in the UT system and somewhere else in like the Northeast. But they basically point back to the similar thing of persecution of queer studies um, and even women's studies groups of, you know, corrupting students with their gay, homosexual lifestyles. And it's like, 
it's it's a slippery slope. You're gonna slide down to this point where, like the same thing they mentioned, UT Austin defended um, left wing economists when they were told to get rid of them during the Red Scare. Um, they're creating a pathway to get rid of anyone that the powerful see as unfit. Yeah, and 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 now there's a sense of moral outrage, mm-hmm. which, as I say, like until very recently, moral outrage was exclusively weaponized against the the weirdos at the margins, particularly you know sexual minorities or romantic minorities. Yeah, um, you know, ask ask any any gay person or trans person who's a a little older uh, <laughs> what what they think about that kind of discourse, right? About the idea that to to simply hold the position that these people are human, worthy of human dignity mm-hmm. and deserving of, of rights are um were considered so far outside the mainstream as to be, you know, provocateurs and to yet again to to invite violence and then have a bunch of just the, the most self you know, self satisfied smug liberals sit back and go, Well, I don't really want to get involved because those ideas seem a bit icky and you know well, yeah. they they knew they knew what they were doing. They totally. they they invited this upon themselves. They've they you what is it, those who those who so reap. <laughs> yes. Um what a creepy fucking bunch of just compromising weirdos. If even if you even if you're just progressive and you're quote unquote progressive where your your entire social program is primary to you and you just want to be out in the front of sort of social movements, mm-hmm. um, like how how fucking dare you pull back from from simply the exercise of ideas outside the mainstream. If you think they're wrong, just go say they're wrong. Yeah. Like that's fine. You can you can say they're fucking stupid ideas. You it can say they're dangerous ideas. You can say they're bad ideas. Yeah. I mean it kind of just shows this like moral panic, which it kind of reminds me of like like the whole like there's pedophiles everywhere and like the accusing this person of being a pedophile when they are, they're not according like there's no evidence they don't they no. completely reject they they're, the yeah, they're not they're not advocating for um, for any kind of pedophilia for the record yeah either. they they're, don't advocate it for it all no. um they completely rejected there's some like pedophile group that like reposted some quotes of his like research which also in like tons of encyclopedias all around the world so it's like are they also promoting pedophilia and he completely yes. said i don't support <laughs> you or your lifestyle. Yeah. Um, oh, it was N- Nambla. Picked Nambla. Up one of his quotes or something like, yeah. pulled some quote of his and this is the evidence that he's a bad person. In the same way that, you know, le- leftists who show any concern for um, the working class that might be out of step with the sort of the PMC sensibilities mm-hmm. are called fascists. Yeah. Or I mean, fascists, right? And these words are kind of ones like, that have such damaging effects when they're used so liberally, like, like just call, like I saw today, um, some person posted about the awful movie, call me by your name, which is like, Ugh. which is, you could just say it's bad. You it's just a to, bad movie. Um, like on, on, on purely artistic <laughs> grounds, bad movie. But they were like, it's promoting pedophilia. <laughs> and the, literally the story is of like, I think it's in the seventies, like you said earlier. Yeah, I believe um, it's set in the seventies in, in Italy. Se- it's a seventeen-year-old and a twenty-four-year-old like student who's like in college with working underneath his like father. It's and a, they yeah, have a romantic it's, relationship, yeah, so it's sex, sexual and romantic relationship. It's a coming-of-age story of a seventeen-year-old in the seventies in Italy. Yeah, but also, which um, they, they, I mean, the age of consent, not like the age was, of consent, it, like in the highest age of consent in all of Europe is like Ireland and that's 17. Most of Europe's like 14 to 16. And with like restrictions based on like other sure. attributes. But I mean, I'm, I'm from, you know, New Zealand, uh, the age of consent there is 16 yeah. without any restrictions. It is, it is, uh, I think unless, unless somebody's your carer or guardian, then there's maybe some, but like, it's not pedophilia. <laughs> no, this is they'd like, this is simply kind of retconning a, a specific American moral panic where, um, you know, a, a friend, a friend of ours was was talking about some of this about like we were talking about the social effect of um, why why these people see specters everywhere, right? There's a specific kind of like f- rad lib on extremely online rad lib, right? That is seeing um, on the left sort of fascist specters everywhere. Everyone is a fascist, a secret fascist who is hiding their secret fascism, and then there's pedophiles hiding everywhere. Yeah. Um, 
you know, and and everyone's actually you know doing doing a white supremacist and no growth. Well, it's deeply rooted in the puritanical American culture. I mean, it goes back as far as the opium dens drawing in white women or the Emmett Till case where he was talking to white women. Those were all socially disapprovable attributes. And now it's like, oh, now it's um, men going for women during like the feminist Me Too thing. And now it's, oh, we're over that. Now it's people of age differences. And it's not, it actually didn't start with people below the age of consent. It started with people who are both adults. Like, oh, yeah. this person's 18. This person's 28. Like, I was 18. My first boyfriend was eight years older. Like, yeah. and I asked them out. So it's like, there's like, it's all of that. And it's going to lead agency. to like, see <laughs> you're a victim. Um, yeah, no, I, I it is. Yeah. It, it's a moral panic, but it is deeper than that. It's, it's a, it's, it's, it's religious. It's religious fervor in that you are seeing sin everywhere. And it's sin, sin, you know, yeah. you're in the catch of the corner of your eye. And so you can kind of pattern match that on, on anything. Um, and people do. And the problem is it's cathartic to, to go and hunt down sin. Yeah. Um, you can, you know, you can identify it in others and you can, you can call it out and you get together with your buddies online. And that's sort of like, that's all you, that's all you do. And you've got to, you've got to keep finding more sin because there's no way you could eradicate it. Mm -hmm. Um, they, they have, there's no attack on say actual avowed white supremacists. Yeah, like there are, you know, like Richard Spencer still walks the streets proud, proudly proclaiming his thing. But I, I think it was you pointing out, like Angela Nagel canceled. Yeah, because she talked. She to talked him. to Richard Spencer and argued with him. Yeah, right? I mean, you know, disagreed with the guy in a sort of civil way. And to be to be civil, but to disagree with Richard Spencer is well beyond the pale. But to actually be Richard Spencer, eh, whatever. That's not as exciting as like a brigading, like sincere leftists online for being, you know, uh, insufficiently persuaded of your religious dogma where you where the religion is that everyone everyone is secretly a fascist or pedophile and yeah um to say otherwise a, a turf as well it's the, the other turf. the other part right to be to be to be um you know suspect in your in your attitude towards trans people um so you can you can find evidence of that anywhere right mm -hmm. and that, the problem is it actually distracts from the fact that there are there are real people who hold these real views and you you know but they're really they're much harder to attack cause yeah. they're, they're so you know, it, it it's not covert. If I can't go looking for it and be a, mm -hmm. an internet sleuth and go, 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 you know, figure it out where it's hidden in the the signs and the portents, then where's the fucking fun in that, right? Well, these these slur names um kind of replace an actual like conversation about these actual ideas or topics or like political cultural events. I mean, a good example is like people on the left like oh if you're pro decriminalization you're anti-woman and you're um promoting prostitution and you're disgusting but then when amy critiques it from a marxist analysis like amy therese mm. oh now you're a swerf and now you're this and now you must cancel for that and there's no winning these people because right. they have such an obsession especially around the kind of like carnal lust of like <laughs> sexuality and like um deep rooted like desire whether like whatever it is, like drugs or alcohol or like right, sex. It's yeah, it's puritanism. Um, these people have a moral objection deeply rooted in that they're not willing to comprehend or address and instead go on to like witch hunts to anyone who's willing to talk about them, whether it's pro or against. I mean, I see it on both sides for the laughter, liberal left male of like, oh, drugs and sex and all these things like it's well yeah, people adopt an, an absolutist position either way in yeah. some sense of like either this is entirely good without mm -hmm. consequence and if you say otherwise you're you're actually just you're a very bad person yeah and you're secretly a fash mm -hmm. you know you're 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 trad trad fash or on the other side right it's sort of um lacking nuance where it's a yeah well you support the the abuse and humiliation and degradation of women you're <laughs> You know, you're a misogynist. It's like it's like porn it's as well, though. Yeah. Um, there's a deep connection between um, like, extremely like the like, tankyish like, and I mean that in a kind of aesthetic only way, not like the deep rooted like historical <laughs> meaning of tanky. Not, not, don't have an actual position on Hungary. Yeah. Um, the ones who have like deeply and rooted like, you know, old socialist aesthetics and cosplay. Um, have basically brought on this like anti-porn narrative as well, where it's like, 
oh, these poor, feeble people and they're completely distinct from every other worker and <laughs> it's basically it just comes down to like sex is bad and it should only be for this purpose and um <laughs> you just kind of see that debate and it's just completely right. annoying see there it's like yes yeah, sex work is liberating like the joshua for congress people or it's like the um, like all pinky, sex is right yes, all sex is like rape. literally yeah. like um yeah no and, and that and it's kind of i mean what it shows is is the limits of um politics as as sort of you know catechism mm -hmm. right it's not you know it is it is not a devotional act to engage in politics it's a, it's an actual contest of ideas yeah and so if you if if you want to contest ideas mm -hmm. you you have to actually express them and yeah. so the problem is that the the shell game people play is to say i'm not going to let you say out loud what it is you think mm -hmm. um because well, because then then I would then I would have to refute it. I would have to express yeah. my 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 counter argument. And you don't want to do that. I mean, the most interesting people that kind of have like the discourse are the ones who are willing to say what they actually believe. I mean, whether you agree with it or not, it's much more commendable to actually be true and honest and say what you believe versus just do whatever it says to please the others. Like so many people are like, oh, I won't talk politics. I don't want to upset anyone. Then then you're just going to compete, continue to trend. Like the whole, you should, politics and culture and discussion and debate shouldn't be things you like end relationships over because <laughs> then you're probably as a child. Actually, children are probably better at it. Yeah. <laughs> like, just um, have it just punch each other in the face like for fun. I remember growing up being told like, oh, the three things you never talk about are religion, politics, and abortion. Mm. And I'm like, I never took it like <laughs> like you should debate all these things like everything's up for debate like I, th I think I was saying on Twitter because I, I read the um the Robbie Suave who's a uh, a writer for the Reason magazine sort of libertarian magazine um fascist it's total fash uh, I meant you <laughs> yeah well he, he he wrote a book called uh, Panic Attack Young Radicals in the Age of Trump which uh, we'll probably review in in a, I don't know, a couple of weeks or something mm -hmm. um but uh. I ended up talking to him for in in a in a bar in DC one time, and he was very nice. Um, I think his ideas are garbage, for the record. Yeah, and I told him so, and and he was like, to his credit, right, willing to have a an actually sort of interesting discussion about why his ideas were so fucking garbage. Mm -hmm. um, and like, it turns out that's just way more productive than saying this person is just you know irredeemable and and inherently spiritually bad and must be must be prevented from saying these bad ideas yeah well i mean i remember like when i first met you before i was like when i was still in the libertarian world we used to debate and discuss everything all the time yeah, and fash i mean i feel most people would have just stopped talking to each other because it they're losers and can't take on debate or <laughs> criticism but um i think to me it was like oh it's important like I'd rather hear someone who actually believes something that's willing to have a conversation than just like not talk to anyone. Like, yeah. And if anyone wants to know who won that debate, Sam's now a Marxist. So <laughs> score one to me. Anyway, yeah. uh, with that, with that bombshell, uh, <laughs> I think that's about all we have time for. Yeah. All right. See you next time, guys. Thanks. Bye guys. Bye.